So today, we're going to code an online PS1 game. Why? Mind your own business. How? I don't know. But what I do have is an idea. Go, look at a PS4. What does it have? A LAN port. What does a PS1 have? It doesn't have a LAN port. But what does it have? Serial. You know what else has both of these things? A Raspberry Pi. There's the Ethernet port. And there's the serial port. And those three pins a TX, RX, and Grand. Recap connect a PS1 to a Raspberry Pi through serial. Connect the Raspberry Pi to the computer through LAN, where I'll program a translation layer between serial and web sockets. I can add a wireless adapter later if I want to. But what this all means is I can play an online game between the PS1 and the PS4. I'm getting ahead of myself though. First things first, how do we even get anything on here? I have no idea. It's time for a research montage. Sorry, that was, that was way too intense. Let's try something calmer. Okay, what have I learned? There are three points on the PlayStation motherboard. I can solder straight to those. What this is going to do is achieve three different things. First of all, I can send programs that I make over the serial port from the laptop without having to burn any CDs. And the way that works is I'll burn something called Unirom onto a disc. I'll run that on the PlayStation. And it'll be sitting there listening over the serial port going, hey, send me some games. And number two, this allows two-way communication between the PlayStation and the laptop. And what I can do is I can develop games in something called called PsyQ, which was the old school SDK used by Sony back in 1990 something. Also like Naughty Dog and stuff made Crash Bandicoot and stuff with it. And so I'll be straight up raw dogging the hardware, so the serial port and the GPU and everything else. And then finally, I can hook up the PlayStation 4 by attaching it to the laptop. And then I can translate any data that comes from a PlayStation through the whole serial system and anything that comes from the PlayStation 1 back to PlayStation 4. Oh, they're on like little rubber feet. This is a mod chip. Take note, it will be important later. It looks like, yeah, this is the serial port. TX, RX, ground. So that's what we've got to solder to. So I've got to remember that these are going to come out the back. These wires, so... What am I gonna do? <clears throat> Not like that. Let's just go on. Like this? No. Am I being an idiot right now? Let's go on. What is happening right now? Oh, this is upside down. <laughs> Okay, that was stupid. Pretend that didn't happen. Okay, okay, there we go. That was annoying. Okay, um, so... This is the back. And the wires are going in there. Where do I want the wires to come out? There's a nice big hole here. Oh, they can come out of there. They can come out of there this way. Alright. So what we want to do, we want to come out the top, so if we put the wires in here, put the wires through here, so if we solder them here, actually through here, yeah, through here, we'll get the wires here, let's put them through there, and they'll come out at the back here, alright, sounds easy enough. Nice. 
There you go. All done. Got a little tail now. Let's go try it out. Hello. Mm, that is one sexy PlayStation. Look at it. A PlayStation with tentacles. That is anyone's fantasy. You telling me you're not into tentacles? You think you're better than me, don't you? You remember back in the PlayStation 1 when we opened it up, the square with the squiggles, the mod chip, more tentacles. That sexy little square, what it does is it makes the PlayStation think that any disc is a genuine PlayStation disc. And the way the PlayStation security for genuine discs works is they etch a certain wobble on the disc and the laser, if it wobbles in that certain way, will be like, this is one sexy disc and it'll boot it up. So what's happening is the mod chip is doing a sexy little tentacle field work for the PlayStation. The PlayStation's like, I'll do that for you. I'll boot that right up. And because I can boot from any burnt disc, I can put Unirom on the disc, boot that up, the square will do a sexy little wobble, and then Unirom will be sitting there listening to the serial port going, hey, send me some games, and I'll write some games in PsyQ, compile them, push them across as an executable, and Unirom will boot those for me as a game. And as we know, laptops these days don't have disc drives, but I have bought a disc burner and some CDs. Hopefully they all still work, now that I've just thrown them over there. But yeah, when was the last time you burned a disc? I mean, it was two decades ago. I'm pretty sure it was some 41. Fat lip, I think. And now it's going to be uni roll. We're hooked up from the laptop through Ethernet to the Pi now, and the Pi is connected to serial, as we know. And I'm running Unirom, and I'm getting output from the PlayStation through this HDMI to AV adapter. Oh! Okay, let's not touch that again. But anyway, uh, so what we got to do now is this is acting as like a serial server, so how do we push data to it? Many hours later. After many hours, behold, Halo World through serial Unreal PS1 hardware. Oh my god! Wow! Okay, now that we did that, it's time to get the controller to work so we can actually do something, not just stare at some text. And here's me in the background, look at me go. I'm loving it. Best, best time of my life. It's just crazy. It's actually working on real hardware. Kind of exciting. I feel like it'll hit again, you know? But I tell you what, this is pretty painful. Many unbearable hours later. Okay, after many hours of doing the same thing over and over again, we finally have it working both ways. It's a bit janky. Uh, I don't know why. So you can see here, this is the PC on the left. And on the right is the PlayStation. It's just really jaggy for some reason on the playstation you can see randomly it goes to really high values with serial devices usually what happens is they have a start bit there's a certain amount of seconds till it should stop reading or like you know like nanoseconds or whatever i'm guessing it's, it's either starting or stopping reading at the wrong time yeah it's really late right now so we'll do this tomorrow Wait, uh, am i at the beach hey hey carl up here. Up here, motherfucker. God damn. Samuel? Shit. No, n it's me. It's Jesus motherfucking Christ, bitch. What am I doing here? You don't remember? Look to your feet, fool. Enough is enough. You haven't connected this motherfucking PlayStation 4 to the motherfucking PlayStation 1. How do I, uh, how do I go about doing that? Damn it, Carl. Do I have to spell it out for you? Look at the way you are currently connecting the PlayStation 1. You are converting serial data to web sockets and connecting directly to your server. You could use Open Orbis, which is a set of open source tools for PS4 development. However, you'll just be wasting your time learning a whole new set of tools. Instead, just make a web app using JavaScript and hook it straight up to your server with web sockets.
Thanks, Jesus. I'll make the web app. Anytime, bitch. I should make a web app. You hear Jesus? We need to make a web app. I could make a native game for the PlayStation 4 using something called Open Orbis, which is a software development kit, but it's way easier if I just do a web app. Because also, it'll run on, you know, a phone. It could run on a bloody smart TV if somebody wanted to do that for some reason. Why, why am I doing this? Before all that, I need to make the game less laggy, and I also need to add, like, a gameplay loop. So now, each player can shoot each other, and it'll just give you a death screen when you get shot. And, to make it less laggy, I fixed this, mostly. There's still some weird corruption going on. It's because the timing is off. I could have fixed this by opening up the PlayStation, and there's two extra pins, which tell the thing that you're connected to when it's ready to receive and when it's ready to send. But instead of doing that, because I'm lazy, maybe I could do it in the future, is I've added a byte to the start and end of each message, and if they don't match, then it just discards the message. It means it's still not perfect the bullets are a bit weird and if you shoot a lot it doesn't like it <laughs> good enough behold here it is in all its glory what's happening here is the playstation sending serial data to the pi i've written a golang application that converts the serial data into websocket data which contacts the server which is on my laptop it's also written in golang and that just receives websocket data and manages all the positions of each player and sends them to each device and so here is running on the playstation 4 and here it is running on the PlayStation 1. And as an added bonus, here it is running on a laptop and running on a phone. So, we're done. What do you want to see next? I was thinking, I bought Nintendo 64, and I'm pretty sure I can open up the cartridge, I can solder in a Raspberry Pi Pico to each one of the pins, and hijack the N64 and write my own code for it, and also I'd be able to potentially attach that to the PlayStation 1. It's gonna be way harder than the PlayStation 1 was, but I don't know, should I do that? Yeah, what should I do? Let me know. Tell me what to do. Tell me in the comments. Should I hook up this PlayStation 1 to a rocket? A turret? A turret could be cool, actually. That could be pretty cool. I'll think about that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, let me know what you think. Also, a big shout out to psxdev.net. Great resource. Loads of reference manuals on there. And there's a forum with loads of knowledge. If you want to learn how to do this kind of stuff, great place to go. And also, they have a Discord. I'm actually not sure if it's connected to them, but it's psx.dev. Great to go on there. Really knowledgeable people. You can ask questions. And a big shout out to a guy called LameGuy64. He has a lot of stuff on his GitHub, which I can't even begin to understand. And also, he has his own YouTube channel, actually. He's doing a lot of crazy stuff. And yeah, I'll upload this code to GitLab and GitHub. Go on there. Feel free to make it into a full game. Criticize me. You know what? Do whatever you want.